Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about interviewers, data structures and algorithms. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, why is it that so many interviewers care about data structures and algorithms? And the short answer is it's usually either because they want to check your theory that you actually know what you're doing and more often than not it is because they have no other way of knowing if you know what you're doing. Let me explain. So in general terms when you're dealing with an interviewer of some sort you're going to face one of two type of people. Either the interviewer is going to be a fellow engineer type of person or someone with a technical understanding who actually knows what it means to be a software developer. Or more often than not, you're going to, you're going to deal with someone who has maybe a little bit of experience or most sometimes just no experience. They have no idea what it means to be a software developer. It also depends a little bit on where you are in the process. If you have a interviewer that reaches out to you on social media and they send you a code test, it's very likely that they have no idea what, what means, how they should assess if you did a good job or not. There are actually companies these days who help companies assess the coding skills of developers because they simply don't have, either they, they, because they don't have time to do it themselves or they have no, uh, no one within the company who knows how to do it. And data structures and algorithms is a very cheap way to assess if someone knows how to code. It's, it's, in many cases, a system that doesn't perfectly reflect the amount of value a person will produce within the company. That's something that you need to check for other means, but it is a very effective way to screen out the first line of people who are unapplicable for your company. If you have a look at the companies that are part of the top of IT, such as Google and so forth, they will have these sorts of things uh, as part of their process. They will have tests that check if you know data structures and the algorithms of, and so forth. And it's a very common practice to put these things very early in the interviewing process, even if you have a multi-step process, simply because you have might, you, you might have thousands of people if you're a really prestigious company who come in and wants to work for you and you don't have time to go in depth with every single person. So by just setting up that first line of defense, just as with a call center or a tech support center, you screen out the people who have, they don't have what it takes and the only people who make it through that filter is going to be the people who have some potential at the very least. And data structures and algorithms is a very, as I said, it's a very cheap and effective way of doing that. It's the same thing as with math. You give someone a problem and then either they solve it or they don't solve it. That only tells you in, all real, in reality that they knew how to solve that problem, but at the very least you know that they know what they're doing with the, this sort of thing. Because say, a person who have absolutely no understanding of programming or a very basic understanding will not be able to solve this problem. So it's a big, it's, a, it, it, it's not enough by itself to do this, but it is a very effective screening method for people who don't, who simply don't make the cut. So for a interviewer to do this, it, it's a very, I would say it's probably the best way of dealing with uh, the interviewing process overall. You need to have someone at some point who has a more in-depth understanding of uh, software development. But from the company perspective, this is probably the cheapest way that you can verify if a candidate should progress from, you know, we have seen their CV to we should take them into a phone call or we should take them into a on-site interview or something like that. You can simply put up a portal or like send them a code test where, oh, here's the algorithm, solve it. If you can pass that, then we will give you some of your time. Because as I said, it's actually a very expensive process to interview people. It takes a lot of time. And this is a very cheap way to just get people through that. At the You, you will screen out at least one third of your candidates, if not more, based on just having this approach. And that's why a lot of companies do it. So what I want you to take away from this is that 
The reason why interviewers favor data structures and algorithms and so forth is because it is a very cheap way for you to assess if someone knows how to code. You don't have to do much in terms of investment. You can literally go and find many, many different coding challenges and so forth. I will argue to you that the worst thing you can do is of course to just copy paste the known algorithm and have someone solve that you need to tweak it in some fashion so that there's a bit of a challenge because otherwise the filter will not be that effective because you might just have someone who knows of the name of this algorithm and goes and copy pastes and copy pastes it what you're looking for is can this person reason about the problem can they solve this problem and if they can well then they have can pass the basic understanding of what you require to give them your time because i promise you there's a lot of time that goes into hiring somebody and that means that you need to have an effective way of screening people who are simply not applicable at all. And that needs to be a very cheap system. And data structures and algorithms as part of your interviewing process is a very cheap system to just screen out the people who wouldn't even make it through the first interview. Have a great day.